So I've been working really hard on my next product to offer online on my Gumroad account. It is a sci-fi spaceship kit bash set, and it's huge. There's so many parts, a lot of variety. And while I was testing it out to make sure all the pieces work together and that you could make, you know, different spaceship shapes with it, I kind of forced myself to learn the basics of geometry nodes so that I could distribute panels and pieces along the hull of one of my spaceships that I was building as a test. And these geometry nodes will be included in this kit bash product. But I also wanted to make this tutorial because this is a really popular topic and I wanted to get this out there for you guys. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to click in this empty area, right click and make new collection. I'm going to name this pieces. This is where all these small kit bash or panel or whole pieces are going to go. And the geometry nodes are going to look at this collection to get the pieces out of. So let's click back onto our main collection and let's make a really terrible spaceship hole. Um, <laughs> because we do need to have something to, you know, put stuff along. Uh, I'm just gonna make something that's super basic, not going to go crazy like I did with my kit bash stuff, which by the way is going to be so cool. Please go to my Gumroad account and follow it so that when that thing does go live, you will be the first to see it. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be epic. All right. So here is my uh, skyscraper that fell over <laughs> um, spaceship. And we're going to make some kit bash pieces over here. It doesn't really matter where you make them. And in fact, the global location of the pieces doesn't matter, which is nice. So I'm just going to click over here on the grid and let's start making some panels first. So I'm just going to start with a cube. And this is important. We don't want to use scale or rotation um, in normal object mode, or it will throw off what we're going to do later with the geometry nodes. So instead, we're going to make sure we go to edit mode and then scale uh, as our you know first touches. If we need to rotate it, that would, of course, be in edit mode as well. So I'm just going to make a few square panels here. I'm going to uh, get out of edit mode. I'm going to press Shift D X and then Shift R, Shift R, Shift R. So I'm repeating that uh, duplicate, duplication of it. I'm going to go into each of these and just size it down a little bit more than the last. Edit mode is tab, S for scale. Maybe make this one um, like a different shape. There we go. And it's annoying me that these are below the grid. So I'm just going to raise these up. Now here's another important thing with these, the origin point is super important. That's where the object gets generated or spawned from. So let's make sure that the origin point is at the very bottom, you know, the base of the actual mesh. Now these are these were scaled, so they're a little off. There we go. Also, there is an easier way to move the origin point. Watch this. If I click on the object, uh, I'm going to go to in for my in my side panel, go to tool and then origins. Now with my move tool selected, look at this. I can just move my origin wherever I want. Pretty cool. There we go. This one is already on the base there. We, okay, great. Cool. Let's make some like heat exhaust pieces. So shift a make another cube. I'm going to move it down here now. Oops, I'm still moving my origin turn off origins. <laughs> and now I can edit. Okay, tab tab into edit mode S Z S, X, make kind of a rectangular piece. Um, I for inset, E for extrude, I for inset again, and E for extrude again. There go. Now here's a nice quick trick to make a grill or a heat vent. Grab a rectangular face such as this one right here. Shift D, uh, Y, and then E for extrude it. And then grab that whole piece again by, by pressing Control L and Shift D, Y again, and then Shift R to repeat that. So we just grabbed one of these little faces, made it thick, and then duplicate it all the way down. Cool. Get that out of the way. We'll check on the origin point in a little bit. Let's make another piece here. Tab into edit mode. I'm going to scale everything down a little bit. S, Z. There. I'm going to press Control R to make some loop cuts. Plus to add an extra loop cut. Enter to confirm. Enter to confirm the location. If you don't hit that enter the second time, the loop cuts will slide around. So with edge selection mode, I'm going to grab these edges. I'm going to bevel them plus plus and then control minus to shrink my selection. Now I can move these up GZ. Nice little shape there. And I should probably bevel these edges just so they don't look razor sharp. OK, control B for bevel. And I just want it to be a one segment bevel. There we go. Nice. And one more. Shift A, add a cube, move it over here, tab in edit mode, shrink it down big time, make it kind of a flat, skinny rectangle. 
There we go. And I'm actually going to make um, two of these, bevel these edges. I'm going to make actually kind of rounded. There we go. Cool. And just for an added level of micro detail, I'm just going to drop that inset face there. Give it a little drop. All right, let's make sure the origin points are good. So this one is not. Let's select origin, drag it down. Uh, that one's good. This one is not. Drag that down to the very bottom face. This one there, that one's already fixed. And that's it for our really quick and dirty Greebel pieces. By all means, take your sweet time and make some really amazing Greebel parts. Just try to have some consistency and try to have scale in mind. But we're just going to stick with this for now. So we got our pieces and they are not in the right collection. So I'm going to press B for box select. Select all of these, press M, and then pieces. And if you see, look over here on the outliner, uh, I have a view layer selected so I can see all the hierarchy. They're all in the pieces. So if I click on the, the disappear monitor, there we go. All right, now let's select our uh, skyscraper spaceship. <laughs> and we're going to get the geometry nodes um, window here. So put your mouse right on the corner. You see a crosshair cursor pop up, click and drag downwards. You can also drag to the side. Or if you want to get rid of one of these windows, click on a lar another one that you want to keep, click and drag it on top of, and voila, it gets rid of the other one. So I'm going to drag this down, change our editor to the geometry node editor, click new, just give it a name, Rebel Gen. There we go. And here it is. It works, it works just like all the other nodes where we've got the noodles or the connection and, you know, it flows through whatever nodes we put in the middle. So this only requires, I think it's three nodes to get this to start working. So shift a, you can do search or you can go to point point distribute. Here we go. Now we are distributing these generic points that are not assigned to anything yet, right? Just points. We can control the density, which is great. Shift a point and point instance, which we're going to assign the points to be an actual thing. So click on collection before you select that collection. Don't do it yet, because if you have a bunch of stuff in your kit bash piece over here, your pieces, you will freeze your computer. So turn off whole collection. I don't know why that's default, because that's really dumb. Um, but now we can select the pieces and look at this chaos. Ah, by the way, I still have my origins turned on. So things look extra funky. So I'm just going to turn origins off and get rid of my side panel by pressing in. All right, so we've got all my pieces all over the faces of my spaceship. Uh, we need a few more things here. So shift a search type in join geometry, put that over here. All right. Now we need one more thing here to uh, control the scale. So shift a type in attribute randomizer or attribute randomize and put it in between these two between the distribute and the instance. And what attribute are we going to randomize? You have to tell it. Now, on some videos I've seen online, you're able to actually select from like a menu. Maybe my version is not new enough. I'm only using 2.92, but uh, for now I have to type in scale and enter. All right, now we have minimum and maximum, which is great. So we can control the minimum maximum size of these pieces. Look at that. If we shrink it down to, you know, scale them from dot two to dot three randomly. Now we can see the shape of our spaceship which is cool, but where's our spaceship? Where is it? Well, it's been replaced, um, but we can bring it back. And that's why we have this join geometry. So we're going to join the original geometry, which is the spaceship, with the point distributed randomized instance of the collections right on top. And now here we are. We have our spaceship and we have our instanced randomized uh, distributed panel pieces. <laughs> uh, we can control the density by turning up density a lot. You can really, really max it out. Be careful if your computer isn't very strong. Now, the only shortcoming of this that I have not quite fixed, well, not with nodes, at least is the edging, because, you know, if a panel just generates right on the edge of, of, a, of an edge, you know, it kind of overlaps. And I don't really know how to avoid that or if there is a way with nodes to make it not go you know, over the edge or not distribute that close to the edge. Um, but uh, my only fix to that is to actually use a separate object for the geometry nodes and then leave the spaceship mesh underneath without any nodes attached. So we're going to uh, right click this. And when I select this, I, mean, I am actually selecting the spaceship. Not not the pieces, which are still over here safely, um, but I'm going to do shift D enter. And now I actually have two spaceships. OK, 
Okay, so I have this first one. Um, we're going to name this ship. Okay, so on ship, I'm actually going to take away the, the geometry nodes, but I'm going to leave them on the other one. So up here, I'm going to just uh, click the X button. There we go. And now if we bring back our other cube, which is invisible, uh, this has the Gribbles on it, but we don't want to join geometry because then we'll still have the old spaceship geometry and not, we don't need that. I'll show you why. You'll see why in a minute. So just take this geometry and plug it in right there. Okay, this guy is not being used. So again, we have the spaceship here underneath and then the shape of the spaceship with just the panels on top. And let's shrink these down a little bit more so we kind of have like some holes poking through, maybe drop the density a little bit like that. There we go. So we've got this guy. See, it's just a skeleton of panels and there. So you can maybe get lucky and shrink your stuff enough to where they don't stick over the edges, but they still will. So what I like to do is I kind of pick and choose where I want panels and greebles to be. Because honestly, on a large spaceship, usually you don't want them covering the entire thing. That's just lazy. It doesn't look, you know, I mean, I'm sure it could look amazing. You prove me wrong. Show me your stuff. But it's a little bit monotonous. So I, I generally personally only want greebles or panels in certain areas. So what I'm going to do is select the, uh, the the ship, which is just the greebles. So I'm going to call this greebles over here. Go into edit mode, select all the faces, and I'm going to do edge split, which is going to disconnect all the faces they, they will be they look like they're joined but they're really just right up against each other they're not really uh joined after we do this so so type in edge split faces and edges by vertices faces by edges i'm going to do that so now watch this if i grab a face look it's just floating right next to all the other ones that it used to be connected to so that's good now i'm going to press select all go to individual origins and i can just scale these down a little bit like that look at that Cool. So now we can kind of avoid, based on how big your pieces are, I don't know what, you're, what you've what you built or what you're doing, but you can scale these down to avoid the edges, right? Right For me, this looks good, except for this one right here. <laughs> we got one, just little rebel. We, we can probably randomize it again to see if we get a better result. Let's turn up your seed to a different number. You can sift infinitely through these seed numbers and, you know, hopefully get a better result. Oh, now we got a funny one over there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, maybe I need to shrink them a little bit more. There we go, cool. Just to avoid those edges. Just wanted to show you real quick how I did this in this project. So I've got the underlying mesh and other meshes because this is a kit batch. These are all individual pieces. They're just kind of slapped together. But the main mesh of the ship is this guy right here. Um, and it doesn't have any greebles on it. It has a yeah, texture that looks like panels, um, which kind of gives it uh, an added level of detail underneath it. But if I get out of solo mode, which by the way is uh, forward slash, now we've got a kind of copycat shape of the mesh of the spaceship on top, which is all the greebles right here. So let me solo this one out and you can see, I gotta, I gotta zoom out. <laughs> you can see where I have the greebles on the empty spaces basically that are flat, that are you know not covered up, that I would like to add additional detail and um and you know just interest to those to those spots so like right here along this side on that flat part and another cool thing that i did with this uh geometry node greeble generator kind of technique is i use it for the sensors as well so i just made look at this it's just a flat panel just a little rectangle right there that what is it doing it's generating or it's it's you know spawning these sensors which are just a bunch of antennas and um weird sensor sci-fi stuff that i made um, and they're just popping out randomly. I have a few of these spread around the ship. There's another little section right here, and I uh, copied and pasted it to the other side over here. And there's another section near the middle of the ship right here, which is just a face with a few extra faces subdivided. And here, same thing. If you subdivide, I think it helps the density. Um, so if you have a really large face, there's gonna it's, it's gonna be lower density than the same size face with a bunch of you know subdivisions. Just FYI, if you want to control density better, play with subdivisions. So that's basically it. A little bit of work up front just to make the individual pieces. These all right here are the actual pieces that are being distributed around my ship. This was my original first go at it, but I found that a lot of my pieces, while I liked them, were just too long and uh, unpredictable. Um, like this thing was sticking all over the place. It just looked like a hairy spaceship with things sticking all out. Like maybe it would be cool for a construction site or like a superstructure that's not done yet. It kind of looked like this. There was just random stuff sticking out and it wasn't really manageable. So I made a simpler set of pieces that were all just kind of square based and not too long, not too big. And it was a lot more manageable. So this is all just one solid mesh. There's no geometry nodes on this anymore. 
I could use this as a panel. I could just stick this on somewhere, anywhere I want. And if you find yourself needing to do that, just select the mesh that has the geometry nodes on it, go to the modifiers, which is what it is. The geometry nodes is a modifier, and then go to your little arrow and do apply. And that will, you know, apply, rasterize, bake, whatever you want to say, all the geometry into an actual mesh. And you can, you know, edit the mesh, you can, you know, duplicate it, whatever. But it won't be, there will be no more nodes because you will have applied it already. So yeah, I hope this video helps you. hope it inspires you. I would love to see what you guys make with this technique. There is a lot of possibilities here and I'm just barely touching the surface. So please be sure to subscribe to my channel so I know that you love what I'm making. Comment down below and let me know what you learned from this video. And thank you for watching. Have a great week.